um, yeah. later. So the, the purpose of this long call is to, to actually discuss all the moving pieces and kind of like double down on the ideas that we had previous months in terms of how do we integrate into reality. And I think one of the kind of epiphanies that I had is actually the, um, well, two things. First of all, is the presence of ops team, you know, the operations team that actually, you know, does consistent work to accomplish certain goals. And obviously for that to exist, it's a chicken and egg problem. There has to be something that, that pays for that full-time work because there, there's no other way around. It's not volunteering anymore. It's, you know, a, an actual responsibility. And it, it actually can take up to 40 hours per week on like organizing meetings, you know, uh, assembling teams, um, managing the knowledge, managing Trello boards, managing all kinds of um, pieces in, in this puzzle. So it's, it's kind of like we, we have to promise these um, units, let, let's call it units of, of people, some deferred either ownership or compensation in some form of products or services that uh, you, Derek, uh, described on that, that diagram. Uh, maybe you can actually share, share your screen. So we have... Um, Basically, the, what I mean is since there is no compensation right now, it should be treated as some deferred, you know, either an option or, or some form of convertible uh, equity in the product or service so that people are able to create this middle layer of governance and, and guiding circles. Because obviously there, there has to be some form of resources flow from the bottom to to the top. And that's, I feel the biggest struggle is just formalization of uh, that team. Because once that is done, basically that will be the team that will ask very critical questions to both sides of you know the equation. The spontaneous um, innovation kind of scope and the actual product uh, ideation and, and formalization. Yeah, I think I think what is really important is to keep that optionality and to kind of formalize it in some kind of a process or uh, instrument. Um, and um, what is uh, complicated is that actually in doing so, you don't want to have actually this component, which is this fluid component, to suddenly become anchored in this uh, call option of saying, look, we're together in order to do that. I think what was really powerful for, for Corona Y is to keep this fluid as long as possible, but for people to trust the system and to know that if there is some commercial outcomes, they would get something out of it. Uh, but you shouldn't get them to the point of, let's say, then behaving like if it were the case. You should try to find a way to, uh, to balancing out. And this is a bit actually the game analogy where um, you start actually with a very fluid and kind of a dynamic, uh, uh, let's say, uh, group of people which are kind of clustering. And, and that would be maybe one project emerging. And actually that project would then require a different type of competencies. And all these guys should actually through their, let's say, uh, I define that as a corona white passport or uh, whatever, let's say, other name you want to call. But... Um, I think we're in a position where technology, and actually you've described that actually in, 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 in quite a few situations, um, we could trace, um, let's say, the behavior and impact. I know there's been a lot of conversation about actually how to value that impact. Um, and, and it's tricky because through digitalization, it's very easy to trace volume as opposed to qualitative uh, data and impact. Um, because suddenly you see just one word or one presentation, one concept can open the door, which makes all the difference. And then on the other side, people say, but look, I send 10,000 messages, which has also value. Yes, of course it has. But this is why I think that is a complex uh, component to, to try and to, to identify. But the, the idea was really to um, keep that component, uh, let's say, uh, alive. Why? 
um, because eventually, and that's very personal, um, I don't think Corona Y is about one product, it's not about one service. Um, some people could perceive it as is, but I think um, I would go back to that, to that uh, let's say, diagram and say, look, our first product is X, uh, but there could be a second one. There could be a service, there could be an ecosystem, there could be a lot of things emerging from it. And, and this is why um, my view was really to define Kranawai as a process. Um, you can call it an innovation process, an innovation engine, um, but I think what is unique to Kranawai is the way innovation emerges. And, um, and that's why it's important to keep, personally, I think, that fluidity. This is where actually the, the energy and you know, linearity and creativity is, uh, is being defined. And if those people know exactly what outcome they will get, they would change behavior. And uh, um, so it's a fine line to, to try to, 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 to define. Yeah, it's, and actually the, the good point about the, and I'll take over a screen for a second. The good point here is this kind of the dichotomy between the Corona Y viability and the projects, right? because um, we had a couple of these, dis these discussions, I think with Frank Gies and Anton regarding the, the difference of projects. So there are different projects that uh, exist in the Corona Y landscape. There are projects that are uh, coming out of Corona Y, you know, as you know, AI literature review, for example, and projects like HealthLand, which is the external project that came to Corona Y started utilizing our volunteers and resources, our you know, brain power, but it's still a, an external project that we're, we're helping um, in all capacity that we can, uh, we can and can potentially help with uh, you know, helping them raise financing through our network and our, uh, uh, let's say, funding.coronawai.org. So I actually think there are two discussions that we, we have to separate. The first one is how do we attract funding to uh, Corona Y? And the second one, how do we attract funding to projects? Because you know, when it comes to funding for Corona Y, we're really, really limited to these kind of you know, donor type of um, uh, you know, aspects of funding. Um, or like in some ways we can try and understand if there are any kind of grants that explore this concept of a, a shipyard or a, you know, a mothership of projects, but primarily all of these will be still um, you know, grants and other um, uh, versions of public funding will be going into, into projects. And of course, there's gonna be customers, which is very important uh, part of any project. It's not like there are customers for Corona Y. Um, it, it just cannot exist by, by definition because there, there is no product in, in this highest level of uh, you know, spont spontaneous innovation. It's mm. a method, it's an environment that produces um, you know, something that customers can, can appear for. I you know think, what I'm I think actually, yeah, for, no, no, I totally understand. I think it would even define actually three uh, components. Um, I think you described two. Um, the first one is really the mothership or the nest, as you have actually described, mm -hmm. which is really this kind of enabling environment, which is where people join high purpose, fluidity, and innovation. Uh, then the second are the projects emerging from that environment. So it's almost like, let's say, the innovation process being, let's say, driven by the Corona Y ecosystem. And then the third one is actually um, what we call as a catalyst or even an enzyme, which is actually what Crown Y could play for other projects, meaning that actually it could accelerate, transform, metabolize other projects through the community. Uh, so, so for me, these are kind of the three, three components. The first one, which is the, the, the uh, let's say, Crown Y ecosystem, um, is, and I agree, um, mostly to be supported by people who are looking, let's say, for the potentiality of that ecosystem. Uh, then you can link to it maybe some call options if suddenly there is a lot of revenues, value being created, but that's something that people would look really long-term. Um, and then each project emerging from Corona Y 
should be almost defined as some kind of a business model to itself. And some of those business models would be for profit. So hardcore capitalistic wine, because it's super competitive and there is a huge demand for it. Uh, while the other extreme could be, let's say, uh, projects done actually to help uh, in situations where maybe other actors cannot, cannot play a role. So maybe helping governments or emerging uh, markets or highly complex situations, whatever. And then the third one are those external projects where Corona Y could play uh, some kind of a catalyst role, being through resources, network, or know-how or technology. And uh, those will need, uh, let's say, to be defined in the way that Corona Y is creating value. So how much value Corona Y does create for that project? And you have to compare that project alone and that project with Corona Y. And the value being created then has to be shared. Um, one way or another. And this is maybe one equation which might be quite different from the two others. Yeah. Great. Alan, uh, were you saying something? We can hear you. No, I was just nodding that that's what you don't see. And I, oh. I, I said, I said um, I agree. Yeah. Cool. Well, maybe one observation or one idea is that, that let's say that that founding nest function, uh, of yeah, well, being valuable, is um, the, the the kind of um, uh, quality that is specifically needed for. Uh, tackling in a transdisciplinary, innovative way, those complex we are increasingly facing. So, and that, uh, I don't know exactly the, the English expression for that, but it's, it's a long bridge maybe, but that is something at least worthwhile to invest in or, and or is a prerequisite for real impact impacts that are needed so i won't exclude that from being an opportunity to get funded but then maybe by different stakeholders and and not based on indeed a business model but more an 2.0 maybe Derek yeah, can reflect on that as well yeah yeah well i think i think actually for the desk component which is enabling the infrastructure, which will then create the opportunities for internal projects or, let's say, being the catalyst of external projects. You have an, uh, an economic concept called the sunk costs, meaning actually in projects requiring a lot of infrastructures, um, you cannot uh, put all the cost of the infrastructure into the viability of the project. You have to separate, let's say, in the sunk cost, meaning the cost yeah. enabling the opportunity to generate cash flows, and then reasonable cost and operating cost combined together to then build a business plan on it. And in the case of, of Nest, I think we had discussed in the past that actually some of the projects, let's say value creation or external service linked to, let's say, third party projects could generate revenues which would go back into the Nest to pay for some, let's say, other basic infrastructure and then even go back, let's say, to the actors who have created those opportunities through a corona y passport or whatever you want to call it um this could be a way to, to 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 look at it but i think it's important to really consider the nest as a call option meaning it's an optionality in creating cash flows yeah and of and of course impact which ultimately is what the purpose of corona y but uh, today we're speaking about business plan business models and cash flows so i think it's implicit that all those cash flows will be linked to impact type of projects. But I think this is a yep. different way to, to look at it. And then actually this sunk costs, then you can go to, to investors and say, look, we need uh, people with sunk capital to make that opportunity a possibility. And I totally agree that actually nonprofit foundations, even as she has some kind of public private approach, uh, or even I would say long-term capital owners and you tell them, look, you help us with the infrastructure initially, you won't get anything for 10 years, but then actually there is something that kicks in 
uh, that actually provides you maybe with some kind of a, I don't know, three, four, five percent yield. Uh, and for them, they say, okay, great, that could be something. And then, the, look, th th there are ways, see, through the concept of blended finance and others, where you can start playing around and based on, actually on, let's say, the, the interest of those uh, 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 capital owners, there's something to be told, especially in a low or negative yield environment. Um, people have, let's say, little opportunity costs for the capital. So I think if you have a nice story and tell them even there might be a carrot down the line uh, to almost maybe cover their costs, if there's success, look, I think there's way and spaces to discuss. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, good take on it. And I actually think that there is... So what, what you're mentioning is how I imagined uh, us funding the kind of like the open data, open science infrastructure, because essentially when, when we talk to people and explain to them, hey, we're building open, scalable, credible, open data infrastructure to power open science. And people are like, okay, like what, what is that really? And they can't really conceptualize that to something actionable and something that is used and integrates into economy. But when you start explaining the, you know, the AI powered literature, you told, hey, this is gonna save epidemiologists X amount of time. This is gonna be, you know, bought by universities. This is gonna be, you know, supplied to uh, pharma research uh, companies and their researchers, all of a sudden there is a click, you know, here's the, the economy, here's the money flows. And, you know, essentially what uh, Literature View Tool is, it's, it's a project that becomes a kind of like, it, it may pay corona -Y for the infrastructure in the future, you know, whenever it becomes sustainable. Let's say in five years from now, we have, I don't know, thousand universities paying subscription of even like 500 bucks per month or something like that. Um, that's a lot of money. And that money could be shared with Corona Y as the vehicle that actually powers all the data aspect of uh, literature view tool. What Corona Y won't be solving for, for that tool and project and company is the actual UX, you know, the user interface, the, the web app, all of these things, but the underlying brains, uh, kind of the, the data flows will be solely relying on the Corona Y infrastructure, the, the actual, you know, knowledge graph, all kinds of uh, processing uh, pipelines and things like that. So in the way I see those projects almost kind of like creating a recurring revenue uh, streams for Corona Y, just in a very, very far future, so to say. No, no, I think, I think this is actually the, the vision and you could even consider the Nesta being some kind of a modern digital utility um, where you have actually revenues which are capped uh, because utilities, as you know, I, let's say have, uh, let's say, yield capped based on the cost of capital. So your, your cost of capital is 3%. Then actually there is an equation telling you that you can maybe get a yield of five. Why? Because actually there's an extra 2% are there for investments and covers actually the operating cost of uh, the utility. So that actually people understand that the nest is all about creating that environment, not about generating, let's say value, but then actually the value is being shared then actually with the project owners and then Maybe there could be a sweetener if there is a big success, like a sale to someone or whatever. But I think what is really important is in the narrative for people to understand that actually there could be different components in the system. And uh, I think a utility component might reassure a lot of people to say, but at the end, let's say Corona Y is to anchor that ecosystem. And actually I can trust it. We know exactly actually how transparent they would generate revenues. It will cover the costs. That is actually the salaries, the investment into the structure, the R&D component. And then whatever, let's say, value is being created excess on that, then that has to be decided actually who will get it. Uh, you could even actually consider creating some kind of a fund uh, which mm -hmm. would maybe finance the sunk costs of new projects. Yeah. So that you don't rely entirely on philanthropy and, and, and let's say, this type of actors, you could combine it with them. So there is a lot of things we can, we can think about, but um, instead of focusing on the tools or focusing on the legal component, I think what is really important is focusing on the narrative, the storytelling. 
because then people actually will feel more comfortable, they will learn the transparency and understand actually where, where, where the community wants to go. Agree. Agree. That's, that's By the way, we got Audrey. Yeah, Audrey Hepburn. Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> I, I, wish, I wish I was Audrey Hepburn. I feel like I'm a clown in a circus. Sorry for being so late. It's a, no it's a little bit, bit of a circus here today, as usual. No problem. Hi. We were uh, just to, to loop you in. We kind of discussed the, the fact that we're dealing with a chicken egg situation where we can't really, you know, have people dedicate time to very specific things that are operational because there is no vehicle of like, you know, either compensation or ownership or something. And then, you know, if if we would have that team, we would have to create some, you know, deferred ownership or compensation. And in a way for us to create that, we need that team. So we're kind of battling with that. But one uh, kind of uh, discussion that we were just having is how do we uh, kind of structure this long-term uh, investment um, kind of uh, sunk cost modeling where uh, Corona Y produces, produces these amazing projects like literature review tool that later on become sustainable and actually commercialized to some extent where let's say in five years from now, Literature Review Tool has thousand universities subscribe to it and they're paying for the services. And chunk of that subscription goes back to Corona Y as a service provider for the actual open data infrastructure. So, you know, it, it kind of sounds easy, except that's not gonna happen for the next couple of years for sure. I'm following, yes. I got you. Um, yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like to have a, a, a more ambition than in a couple of years. <laughs> a different take. Yeah, no, no, apart from uh, uh, my, my own needs, but um, to these complex challenges, and these are kind of fluffy words, but really health crisis, climate crisis, food crisis, and such, they, so those are all actual life-threatening, big, global, complex challenges where the operational of, uh, organizations as well as the, 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 the field of transition actors are pretty much fragmented, offering uh, a collaboration and knowledge infrastructure that facilitates interdisciplinary or, or transdisciplinary uh, uh, work on is really needed with within a couple of years. So um, on one hand, we must be realistic, but on the other hand, if we can incorporate in that narrative. And I agree wholly with, 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 with Derek on that. We need that narrative primarily. We can incorporate that narrative. Uh, um, our vision on that urgency, that need. Uh, our vision on what it takes in terms of collaboration, infrastructure, knowledge, expertise, radical innovation. And we can display first tokens, first uh, examples of, of what it might look like, yeah, then we, yeah, well, maybe we should allow ourselves to be more ambitious and aim high and say, listen, problem holders, stakeholders, um, uh, can we agree on this narrative, on this, and how about enabling us to prolong our activities, expand, to grow, to diversify, uh, do invest in nest, <laughs> uh, and, and let's say let's let's give that a serious try in terms of actual engagement with these organisations within a couple of months, not in a, in a couple of years, in a couple of months. Really, the whole world, and I don't know what your experience is, but the whole world is, is talking about the new normal, about uh, system change, about 
coming out of this crisis in a new way that really tackles the underlying problems. And I know there are counter forces, but there is a rising awareness about these complex changes and how they are intertwined and what it takes. And the crisis helped us to, let's say, uh, uh, experiment with these new ways of leadership, new ways of collaboration, new ways of ingenuity, etc. So, um, okay, I rest my case. It's to add to the story, if, Eric. If, if I may, um, yeah. just for, for 30 seconds, um, and Arthur knows this, uh, I've been having these continued exchanges with Jack Park, uh, who is a member of the Corona Y community. Yeah. And, um, and thinking about uh, how we can enshrine uh, in, 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 in more traditional vehicles, ownership vehicles and structures, how we can enshrine the varied contributions of people over time as knowledge is, uh, you know, is progressed and polished um, through these collaborative fora. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it, the, the truth is that it's um, the architecture for the collaborative, the collaborative fabric may be there and the architecture may be there, but the truth is out of every 10 such clusters, maybe one or two may actually yield something that is workable and that will hold value in the traditional way that that's computed uh, from a financing perspective. And mm -hmm. so, uh, in order to, so we've been talking about, you know, GitHub structures and how you transpose those to knowledge, um, to knowledge quests and knowledge structures. Mm -hmm. And when, and, and where and when knowledge is taken by another, improved upon, and then pulled back into the core, you know, um, codification of the knowledge. I don't, please stop me if none of this makes sense, because I don't know how to express it well but w where people are taking something and iterating on it and making it better in a loose informal network where attribution is kind of hard and it's not really granular and ownership is not clear. My sense is that we need to be able to create very dynamic special purpose vehicles, SPVs or some sort of frame, some sort of structure around something as soon as it hits a critical threshold. And in order for it to continue to be viable, in order for it to continue to have oxygen to breathe, I come back to some of Derek's principles around, and I, don't, I have no idea how these things come together, but the principles of reciprocity where yeah. they have to, uh, we can enshrine and create a vehicle where, you know, 10 people end up becoming co-owners of an idea provided each of them continue to vouch for the other. Uh, at a significant enough level that the 10 are happy, that all 10 are on the ownership of the particular uh, idea or knowledge cluster. And then they have to continue to be seen to be um, acting in, in ways that are, um, you know, uh, aligned with principles of reciprocity in order to continue to then benefit from any licensing or franchising, micro-franchising, modeling that may come out of applying said knowledge. Does any of that make sense? No, I think, I think, I think it's, uh, yeah. it's very clear. And uh, what is interesting is actually through technology, what you could do is create some kind of smart contracts, uh, which would maybe renew themselves, let's see, like, like a decision tree, maybe every few weeks, days, depending on the project, so that actually that community actually, let's say, uh, survives or enriches itself based yeah. on the way people uh, contribute and, and the way they can contribute can be by time, IDs, uh, or even actually capital, even include in that community the investors. Um, and it's true that actually through blockchain technology or decentralized ledger technology, smart contracts could be structured in a way where actually what you just described could be enshrined. Um, and, and then of course, that would occur when the project arrives to the threshold where there is some kind of commercial viability. So be it by its impact or by yeah. its your potential. Because we discussed early on that some of those projects emerging could be a hardcore capitalistic project generating revenues 
because there is a strong demand in the marketplace, little competition and high added value. But on the other side, there could be also projects who will be there for the impact and the purpose. And maybe revenues won't be there. But um, I think I agree that actually at one point there could be some kind of, let's say, a phase where you enshrine that into some kind of a smart contract. And then That's actually from there on move and define its own governance. And I would even go further and say that actually each of those contracts could have some kind of a social contract within it. Yes. The behavior and of that community. And the community could be a few people, but some of those projects could suddenly have millions of people maybe after a few years. Um, so, and they could each be part of that contract uh, in one way or another. So that's more philosophical, but I think uh, that could be a very interesting socioeconomic governance tool, uh, which could go even beyond actually Konawai, but Konawai could be, let's say, the nest where it emerged, and then actually could just like live by itself based yeah. on that social contract enshrined within the smart contract. Yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. very eloquently put, Derek. I get it. Um, in, in, in practical terms, it's so funny. It's like this same challenge and problem is cropping up absolutely everywhere we uh -huh. look. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's everywhere. I don't know if it's just me. Are you seeing it too? It's everywhere and we don't yeah. have an answer because the solutions are there. The willingness is there. The, the resource, people are coming together, not thinking necessarily in the short term about being paid. Um, but they should be able to benefit in the longer run from their, from their goodwill and from that sort of spirit of reciprocity. Yeah, um, I'm, misusing, uh, I'm misusing, yeah, uh, Derek's concept a bit, but uh, their contributions. And yet yeah. we have no means of capturing the dynamic and changing value. It could be daily, weekly, monthly of these things where um, people end up their energies have to be aligned on cap tables. Sorry to sound like a, an investor, but we have to figure out how to reward them for what they're doing. It's human, it's human self-interest. It's, it's Mansur Olson. It's all those books that they forced us to read in grad school on my bookshelf, uh, which I'm looking at and I can't find. So anyway, sorry, I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah. Now, yeah, um, my observations as well. Uh, I'm kind of in the sidelines, uh, um, engaged in innovative, some innovative technology projects, also voluntarily. Uh, it has to do with energy production and, and, and transport. Uh, and there's basically the idea that, um, well, those involved might be offered some compensation. They don't need much, okay. But the, the revenue, there's, there, there's a well uh, um, detailed, uh, let's say, sheet, costs and benefits and revenues, etc. So it's profitable in terms of cost reduction and, and et cetera, et cetera. 80% um, of the revenues will go to reforestation. And that is exactly the point where, let's say, the classical investors say, hey, uh, wait a minute, this is not uh, Yeah, this is uh, such a thing that the, 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 the yield of all that work and contributions are eventually a healthier climate on the planet. Now, this is somewhat huge or large, but same issue there. The same in an, an urban mining project I'm involved in. Uh, um, doubt, insecurity, and uh, um, um, maybe maybe we should make this, these observations and these uh, um, um, viewpoints and and um, well, let's say issues of of enabling and enabling. Um, explicit in, in that narrative about uh, Corona Y um, <clears throat> to share that with potential partners in this to enable them to recognize also this issue. If this is all around the place, 
it is recognizable. It's uh, so why why not incorporate that in 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 the narrative and uh, make it explicit that we are very much willing or maybe even active in kind of protesting the solution for that uh, as well. But okay, I don't know. If this makes sense, but you know. Um, Yeah, it does. I, know, I think I think it's clear. Yeah, it does. It's just making it. How, how does this Actionable. get translated? To practical step. How does this get? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, that was my 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 thought as well. I think yeah. I think actually, maybe for Audrey actually we we had discussed earlier on um, three different types of um, structure within Corona Y. One was the nest or the infrastructure, which is creating, let's say, the ecosystem or the process. Then projects emerging from Corona Y. And those projects, I think, can generate revenues or can have impact. And that impact, just as should be bound on what Valter just said, uh, can have some value creation. For example, if you reduce, uh, I don't know, uh, CO2, or if you improve uh, social inclusion in certain regions, whatever, we're getting to the point where this can be, let's say, calculated and, and, and valued. Um, and then the third uh, component would be projects external to Corona Y, where Corona Y could be a catalyst or some kind of an enzyme to accelerate their development. And this has a value, uh, easy to, to, to compute, because you would say, okay, that third party project alone, its development and impact. And now that project with Corona Y let's say it's development and it's back. And then actually the differential could be shared according to a certain type of equation. But, um, and then what we said, we said, look, those two, uh, let's say components linked to projects can be for profit purely or a combination of for profit, not for profit. While maybe the nest or infrastructure side could be considered some kind of utility where you have a cap on the type of revenues it should be there to cover the cost of capital. And then of course the operating cost and maybe the R and D. And then maybe it's the excess revenues could be then shared, let's say with maybe the community based on the activities or could be put in some kind of a fund to then let's say complement new sunk cost projects. And mm -hmm. uh, that's when I described the economic concept of sunk cost that actually some projects cannot be, let's say, computed based on all the infrastructure you need to make it happen. Some of it should be just out of the equation, otherwise it will never be viable. And that sunk cost usually is, let's say, paid by, let's say, philanthropic, landed capital, or let's say, government multilateral agencies. But then actually, if some revenues down the road is being generated by Corona Y and the nest, we would, could create some kind of a fund which would complement maybe traditional philanthropic, let's say, capital to accelerate the, let's say, development of new projects depending on some costs. So that was one okay. approach of looking at it. But so if we take that um, to its next level, like at the NEST's approach, um, the NEST uh, basically cultivate, they discover, they cultivate, uh, they incubate, they... Um, they provide, and, and this is a, there's value to this, and this is a very well-established model now everywhere, albeit one that's, um, that doesn't yet, it hasn't cracked the problem of um, uh, enshrining uh, diverse uh, stakeholders into the, uh, the, uh, the success, into the upside of success when success occurs. It's not necessarily enshrined well, but I think that, you know, um, it's something to look at in terms of, um, again, it's, it's some sort of uh, tracking of contributions and um, capture of value. And as soon as there's some sort of um, liquidity events, because everything changes as soon as there's liquidity events. Hmm. And um, so- but, but what, what, what was interesting was to try to define what Corona Y is all about. Um, and, and I just share actually my, 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 my screen. Um, it was actually this, this concept of a process. 
um, and uh, what sustained that process or innovation engine, whatever you want to call it, could be uh, not considered an incubation space that would be, let's say, uh, considered to share the upside in, through an equity structure or whatever, but more to say, no, look, this is an enabling environment, some kind of utility. Um, mm -hmm. Why? Because you want to build trust um, and, and be aligned with this concept of a really open, fluid community of saying, look, we're all in there for the purpose. And then have mechanism for those projects generating revenues to then cover, of course, let's say the cost of the operating side, but then upside being shared with the actors generating that value. And this is where we're discussing about this kind of passport or whatever, golden journal uh, approach and, um, and, uh, and then even smart contracts or, or whatever actually could be, could be developed, but uh, um, the, that could be a way to look at it. The direct question though, um, when you're talking about utility infrastructure, like mm -hmm. utility models, um, for me, I think of shared ownership of infrastructure. I mean, that's nothing new. Uh, I mean, that's what public mm -hmm. infrastructure is. Um, uh, how do we uh, sort of navigate the interface of the public and private here? Um, how does the shared ownership concept um, manifest? Um, and, and ultimately, I, I get that smart, so I like the idea of smart contracts being triggered on the achievement of certain criteria, um, assuming the technology is doing its work and we're seeing tracking, you know, of what's, what's being achieved in each one of these little clusters. But how, is, it, is, it, is it any different than a public good at the end of the day? Great question. I might be, I might be asking the wrong question. I think it's- What do you mean by public, public good? What do you mean by public good? Like those um, we are paying taxes for? <laughs> Kind of. Um, yeah. <laughs> kind of. It's an edgy topic. I, I just assume, and here's how I navigate this world. And uh, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm a little bit more uh, pragmatic in that way, but I just assume that public good, you know, things don't really exist. And that's like, I'm assuming that the, the taxes that I pay cover the basics like roads and all of these things, but there is no infrastructure to solve the actual impactful things. You know, not the, not the roads, but the, all of these conflicts that we're experiencing as a society. I think, I think you had to differentiate actually public goods from the concept of the commons, uh, meaning actually what belongs to everyone and what everyone needs to protect. Um, and, and what is interesting with COVID, I think uh, the health commons is, is emerging. It's not a question of uh, it's a personal health uh, profile or a national health profile. I think for the first time, like climate change, like Val described, I think global health is becoming some kind of a global commons. Why? Because actually we need together to address it. We haven't addressed, yet addressed it. And, and the way I always perceive Corona Y is some kind of a new tool to yeah. build security in that new global common, which is it's the global health. Uh, now, of course, you have to be careful because incumbents have certain anchoring competencies, business models, frameworks, which can influence the way that global commons emerge. Uh, and of course, we can look at technological solutions being tricky because suddenly you go let's say, on the edge of privacy, whatever, et cetera. But I think in our discussion, um, if you can anchor the innovation process as a utility, uh, that supports, let's say, in a more neutral way, that concept of a health commons emerging. And this is why people join Corona Y. It's because actually it is a higher purpose initiative. Uh, so that's why we had to be very careful not to forget that when we start structuring, defining, justifying, investing, covering costs, uh, which is very important. I think uh, one way or another, and that's purely intuitive on my side, to have a key component, which is there to support, let's say, the community. And today the community can be even considered global. Um, so um, Konawa could be that utility to, let's say, let 
solutions to build security in that global common emerge. Uh, but of course, it can be deployed, let's say, to address other types of, of risks. It could be climate change, food, social inclusion, whatever, et cetera. But again, as being complementary, it's not like it's going to address everything, but it's a new, unique perspective to address those needs. And I think that's what is, for me, so unique about Corona Y. It's actually that open, fluid, transparent, nonlinear space suddenly coming to specific products and services. And that optionality, uh, I think, is its uniqueness. And this is how I, if I had to, to support it financially, would justify it in my narrative of saying, look, no, no, I want to support Corona Y. It's a unique process. I cannot get it anywhere else. And, and I would say you, you might even appeal because we, we elaborated on it and say, okay, which possible partnership, investment type, payment, financial streams, I would easily also knock at the door of, of so-called corporate social responsible corporations and B Corp platforms saying, listen, you are part of a spaceship called Earth. We are, you know, uh, how about some support in terms of, you know, community capacity or money or a donation or what? Everybody is included and unique. Uh, I don't know. In a way, I don't think that this complex, I'm, I'm involved in climate change. No, we are all involved in climate change, but involved in transition movement already for about 10, 15 years. You know, I was there working in Copenhagen. Um, we, we didn't come up with this elaborated, complex reports like the IPCC reproduces without proper data science, transdisciplinary collaboration and research. So in a way, there's already this de development of crossing boundaries, spanning boundaries, crossing uh, bridges, uh, um, collaborating from, from different perspectives. Uh, that's one point, but unique in terms of an immediate response to a unique impulse like th this pandemic, Yes, it's, it's unique. And I think it may be more viable if we can see, can, can have, can develop and, and maintain this perspective that it, it needs partnerships. There is something going on in, in the wash domain, water, sanitation, hygiene, also yeah. about, about uh, pandemic, about COVID. Fit, not only in, in, in wastewater, Jack came up, I, I could as well, with ex, uh, um, relationships, reports, scientific reports, articles on the relationship between biodiversity and health, and it, 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 it makes sense, yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Um, we are, humans are the invasive, <laughs> and um, the pandemic is nature's law enforcement. It's, it's quite simple. So uh, we're, we're all in this together and a, a collaborations with other value, value adding um, organizations like World Resources Institute that are doing fantastic work for data science and reporting and analysis, but with another set of knowledge, other bodies of knowledge, that is what is needed. And an integration function, because it, this is about integrating Hollands in what we now have that are pretty much fragmented in our society and economy. Integration function be something that we could aspire as Corona Y and of course we should just skip then the, the word Corona Y and come up with something even more, more fabulous. But it is, it's about integrating those uh, um, transition movements and their, their action on or the need for knowledge creation and sharing uh, in a transdisciplinary intersystemic way because all these challenges complex are intertwined and that's that's what needs to be addressed and within a couple of years i say within a couple of years otherwise we're doomed we're fucked <laughs> sorry to put it and that's yeah, I, I agree 
I, that should be part of the narrative. And I'm really confident, apart from having some network in, in that, you know, in that domain, in these domains, I'm confident that, that many people, maybe not that aggressive, not mask wearing, Trump abiding <laughs> people, but a lot of people are saying, yes, actually, when you worded it, what I, f I thought, what I felt, this is indeed what's needed. And this is the awareness on, on governmental level, on international level, in NGO level. We need to break down these walls and, and, and co collaborate more radically. <laughs> we are with this experiment to prolong this, giving other complex challenges. And that should be a part of the narrative to make it explicit and enable people to resonate on it and say okay uh, where can i sign how can i contribute and then we should come up with i think a one practical next step is to to have two or three uh, uh, enticing diagrams sheets uh, where we are already discussing and showing to each other about okay which actors which factors uh, models vehicles contracts and stuff that might appeal to, to certain people and saying, listen, this is not a proven model for entering and export terrain. We're experimenting this and how about to, to be a, a fellow traveler on this, on this path? Let's join. Who's carrying which weight? Um, okay. Uh, so I think a practical, well, because your question, Audrey, on, okay, now practical next steps. I think lay down these thoughts and these concepts and lines and schemes and you know diagram elements on indeed a, a couple of papers and say this is this is our view this is our narrative this is our vision and this is what we think that is needed and uh, and this is our approach and this is what we like to experiment. And this is why we need contribution. And we have a lot of contribution. We should come up with the facts and figures about who is using our services now. How many people are involved in Corona? Why? Which expertise from which universities? Come up with a good marketing story and then uh, uh, make it clear where the contribution can be made financially or socially or whatever. Yeah. I agree. And in terms let's, of getting even more... Let's draw these maps. Let's draw these schemes and maps and engage with uh, uh, good facts and figures on our services, the use of it, etc. I have a list of that. That is very practical. What we need to be able to communicate when we engage with the other stakeholders on this spaceship. Yeah? And then... Um, well, okay. That's more than 30 seconds. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. that, that was great. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, guys, I'm just thinking, uh, I mean, there's a, it's a, it's only a, uh, an early attempt to capture the, um, the most um, succinct projects that are coming out of the community that will require support. So that's one thing. So, you know, of the 1,500 conversations that have happened in the last three months, if there are 50 clusters emerging and 15 projects that require further funding, yeah. what I'd like to try to understand is what are the models? What are the business models that sit on top of a commons, that sit inside and on top of a commons? I just saw a news article about a... a some uh, one of the cohorts of Y Combinator that just raised VC money on the back of an open source model. Yeah. Um, so hope springs eternal. It, so that I've never seen that before. It's again Jack who shared this with me. So it's happening. It's possible. So the question is, what are the three or four core elements in that mapping uh, about that you that you just um, suggested yeah. <clears throat> that we have to understand? And, um, and, and what sorts of critical thresholds and uh, mechanisms do we want to build into this, like the smart contract and, you know, the yeah. unit's value and uh, maybe the rewards for discovery or 
particular types of you know lateral collaborations in the community that make it interesting. Um, I don't know how how else we we proceed. I, I think if, we, if you play, I hope you're recording this, uh, Arthur. Yep. Yeah, of course you do. Now, if you play back and 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 trans transcribe and translate to a diagram, we have a lot of already knowledge on this innovative knowledge function we envision. Yeah, uh, that we can capture on on a diagram. I mean, uh, this this first financial viability diagram. It was. Pretty much easy, but we should elaborate it and and yeah. and encapsulate all those other points. So about computers, about stakeholders, about uh, um, the people we need to engage with, uh, various types of income streams, and how they relate to that three-layered or three-component uh, model that 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 uh, Derek and so. Um, and uh, uh, worked so eloquently. Um, and by the way, maybe we should some sometimes try not to think and to talk in terms of business model. How about homeostasis as a natural function to maintain form and function? operationally how about adaptation and transmutation that needs to apparently is there as part of evolution that's that's with the increasing complexity living up to the life conditions that are increasingly complex let's let's not let's sometime take a, a step back and try to word it in terms of how do we create a model for homeostasis and how do we create a model for adaptation and transmutation which we call in business terms innovation yeah uh, i have to jump on we are unconsciously topic. framing it in terms of business model and uh, okay you have to hop off i have to hop off but um so here's what what i propose let's digest this call i'll pull the recording uh shortly and i created this trello board uh, hashtag funding and yeah. let's let's try to asynchronously organize our thought process into uh, a specific you know actionable items because I feel like we we're actually on the edge of being actionable right we we've discussed all of these things for so long for a month that we're you know ready to take an action and I actually believe that the most important part besides the map is is actually eyeballs because no matter like what narrative we create no matter what you know amazing products or services or imaginary income streams we create if we don't get the eyeballs that are really um on point with all of these things or we get the wrong type of eyeballs it just doesn't matter like like no one no one will will interact with us if we don't get the right people in front of us so i would say let's take some thought about who are the stakeholders stakeholders on the other hand and how do we make this actionable for them too because there's so many people that want to take action and they just don't have an opportunity to yeah Okay. okay, maybe we just follow on that hashtag funding chan uh, channel, sub-channel, uh, and maybe try to um, articulate some of what we've captured in this recorded session. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, use some of this vocabulary. And um, uh, I'm seeing that, and, uh, Vautia, Vautian, I, I don't even know you. Hi, it's like really nice to meet you. But uh, I'm seeing that maybe what we should try to do is like write something um, in, you know, two or three paragraphs, make it a post or something, try to put it out there, try to get feedback on it. Uh, yeah. And, uh, from the Corona White community, you mean? You know, I mean, from our, our call just now and, and yeah, feedback from the Corona White community or even yeah. beyond. Yeah. Um, we can even put something on Medium or I don't know, yeah. on Impact Alpha, just to test these some of these ideas and see what feedback we get i know that arthur has to go um so 
yeah. maybe but that's what I mean by eyeballs. You know, medium. Yeah. You know, impact health for any places. Y combinator, yeah. you name it. I think yeah. I think I think what could be quite powerful actually in that approach is to identify maybe three key needs. So we have actually corona, corona, actually COVID, but maybe there might be two others. And then try to say, okay, how that actually innovative process could address it in a complementary way to kind of step, let's say, the entire discussion beyond simply, let's say, the COVID situation. So yeah. we have the big picture. And then actually, uh, I had um, uh, done that slide as a, some kind of a preliminary map to, to try to see what type of output we have today, actually, from Corona Y. So curated data, analytical tools, services, others. It's very preliminary. And then try to identify what type of products and then business models actually could emerge from it. And then revenue streams, whatever. That could be a nice way to kind of start, formalize. And then, of course, I totally agree with uh, Vout and, and Audrey to, to, yeah. to get the, the, the discussion out there through maybe created, let's say, um, articles. That articles, yeah. yeah. Can, can, we, can we, for five minutes or 10 minutes, continue, Derek and Audrey and, and let Arthur off the hook? <laughs> yeah, actually, if, if someone can create a Zoom call, because uh, I have to use this one, and uh, just click the ah, okay. I can watch it later. Yeah, Derek, and are they, shall we continue for five or ten minutes? To uh, wrap it up? Or are yeah. uh, they? I'll send a link, uh, but uh, I will, uh, I'll be very, uh, should I send a link right here? Actually, yeah, you can, you can send Let me it. just do that right now. Uh, it's fastest, and then we can... Then we can leave Arthur to his call uh, and just bear with me one second. Yeah, so I mean, if, if anything, we need someone writing like every single day. And that's the one of the operational items that I also see uh, missing on the team because, you know, I can write except my whole days is, is just calls. And like it, I'm not at the point of, of being able to to write anymore. Okay, I'll, I can try to take a stab. I've uh, just set up a Zoom link here, yep. and I just wrote a little blurb on our funding channel, and I invited you into the funding channel, Derek, because you weren't okay, there. Okay, great. Okay, and, thanks. Uh, we can take it from there. And All right, perfect. Thanks, Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you so much.